Well, hello again. It's been about two weeks since I put a video out. I got the new VTX. And I miss my throttle lock. Ordered one up on eBay. I need to put it on. So I gotta see if it's gonna fit. I tried before. This little piece was in the way, so I gotta take that off first. Foil screws. I'm using a T10 on these, but it's probably a 116. Now I out carefully, don't drop the keys. I'm doing it in my front yard. That means if I drop something, it'll probably get one of the grass. We don't want them to fall in the grass. A lot of the tools are at the shop, started a new job oh, about two weeks ago. So I gotta be really careful. The most important piece with this is this piece right here. You gotta see if it'll fit on the grass. If it does ever so slightly. I'll give you a few pieces of this rubber, put in this one. I'll tell you to trim it or to take out the gap right in there. This is about the third kit that I've installed. This one's a little bit different because it's got the thicker grips. Like Kawasaki just took that large piece, put it in here, took up the space, no problem. Get a couple decisions when you try to match this to your bike. The biggest one is, and I found it so far, is it depends on the width of your your kill switch. On my Kawasaki, the kill switch was a little bit thinner, so I was able just to use the regular stock pieces. With this one, it's a little bit wider. And that requires us to use the longer piece, this little adapter to, make, to uh, cover the distance on there. It also gives you two different set screws, I'm sorry, just two regular screws. One's longer than the other, this is the longer one. You'll need this longer screw with the spacer to bolt into this piece. This will make a little bit more sense as I go together with it, but take your time, go slow, you'll get the best results. It also gives you a couple of Allen keys. One of them is going to be for that large screw, the other one, the small one, is going to be for these screws right here. I'm making sure that they're open all the way, which they usually are, all the kits that I've had have been. I want to make sure i got plenty of room for that rubber spacer. I want to make sure that that open end is on about the furthest point from the, about the furthest point from where this is. So that'll be there. The mechanism will be up on top. I already see that that's going to be difficult, so I'm going to run that in there and then I'm going to feed this through. That's going to move. I'm not worried about that. Sometimes it helps to have a small flat blade screwdriver, a pocket screwdriver. Most of my tools again are at the shop. So we're I realize I just lied. A little universal tool. I'm good is pushing the lip in and tucking it in, pushing the rest of the band in after that. Once I get this in, I like this because it's already snug. The set screws right here help hold it to keep it snug, but with that rubber in place, it helps to hold it. 
So you've got to worry about the slipping. Got to get it all started. Little white line right there. That's the band. All the way around, it stops right about here. Again, this piece is going to move up. You'll see that in a moment. Here's the bottom shot. You can see how it wraps around and ends near the bottom. So now we're going to snug that up and put the rest of the kit together. And then later on tonight we have the fun of editing, I think I've got six different videos. I do through the YouTube, but I also have a couple people I ride with that I edit for them, so it's good times. For inquiries and pricing, <laughs> just kidding, I just do this for fun. Take the small Allen key, you don't have to run them in forever, just make them nice and snug. as well. Time saver tip, when you're done with this kit, put it in your tool bag. I haven't had this happen yet, but in case it ever comes in the rug, or you get a modified or do whatever, it's nice to have the right tools for the job. And she's holding solid. So, the ring portion is on there. When I'm done, I'll put the end cap on after it's adjusted, and I'm sure that it's going to work fine. One of the pieces that makes the magic is this little guy. He kind of Basically undo these two screws right here and here. Clamps onto the bar. And then we'll attach that other piece, which I'll show you in a moment, to here. Issues. It's hard to see the spacing between this switch <clears throat> and my front brakes. It's a little bit thin, so I'm gonna have to find an Allen key, loosen this up so I can move this out of the way, so this will fit, and then so it's also out of my way when I tighten <clears throat> when I put the cap on. Ride with a bunch of people. You guys can split up the tools. I had a highway bar that. Came loose on me, I almost lost the screw. I didn't have that particular size. One of my buddies did. Different times I've had stuff in here, including a set of jumper cables once. So now this piece should fit in. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. Got the back piece right here. I'm just gonna slide on there, put it on the bar. <laughs> There's Cameo, hi bear. That's the neighbor's cat. He's cool. I guess they're getting along. When you look underneath this line right here, wait, this line right here, I wish I had better lighting, but that was kind of interfering, so I'm going to get everything started and then I'll move everything around so that it fits. When I hold this, I usually take, put a finger over that one hole so that screw doesn't come out. enough to hold it in place and then it will start the bottom one. I recommend that you do that start just a couple threads each. If one goes in sideways or it makes it one side is uneven with the other you'll cross thread something and it's not going to go together and your small project will become a bigger project. Side note with any projects allow yourself a ton of time because 
once in a while you won't have an Allen key, you'll have a wire loom in the way, you won't have the right tools, your tools will be a shovel. There are all sorts of weird stuff. Got that one a little bit too tight. around. First thing you do in this part is put this switch on. This little hole here, there's a hole right in there. I loosen this up a bit to make it easier to get onto and off. Also it loosens up the spring tension so I can move this. It's hard to see but that lever moving up and down, that's going to allow enough clearance for the screw to get through here. You'll see that it's fatter up on top, thinner on the side. I'll start it up on top, put the screw through, and then I'll run it down. And with some ease it should go. So now for the holes here, I can take this screw and feed it through. That's going to be the lever. So for you to activate it, that loosens everything up so that the throttle will spin. And then when it's adjusted correctly, you throw that switch down, that will lock the cruise control in. I'm going to put this lever on. I'm going to put it laid down at the bottom here so that I have access to my switch. I think I might move it. Well, I like to keep things snug as well. Just keep in mind if you're walking around where your tools and parts are below you, just be careful. Alright, so it snaps in. It'll hold itself up. Start the screw by hand or with a driver. I recommend usually by hand. It's a little bit tight, so. to over tighten it. You just made it nice and snug. It's got a locking washer. Uh, unlock that to take some tension off. Back that screw up just a little bit. I'm screwing it just so that I don't damage the threads. I don't have to go far enough where this will clear this. The spacer goes on. This will event ultimately determine where this needs to be. When you tighten this screw up, that'll bring this where it needs to be, and then you can tighten everything up. So I'm gonna run that screw in. This is one of the Allen keys they provided. You can help, Bear. I've got Bear mewing at me right now. Just kind of holding it all together, preventing it all from rotating. The screw is going in nicely. The screw is now in this piece right here, so I just take up the slack. Never had one of these loosen up on me. But again, keep the Allen keys in your tool bag just in case. When I'm riding, it's up out of the way. I have access to my switch right here. When I want to flip it on, flip it on, flip it off, it's right there. When I'm done, I'm going to test drive it just to make sure that's where I want. And if I always, it, it, for any reason, I want to change it, all I got to do is loosen these nuts up, rotate it back around, and tighten everything back up. So. These little things are pretty sturdy. I haven't pushed them to the limit yet. I did have one buddy who one of those taps broke. It still worked. And his fix to that was buying another bike. Okay, he bought another bike is really what happened. I don't really want any side play. A little bit is fine, but not too much. But I don't want it too tight where this thing doesn't work. So, I go through, flip it. Goes in with these. Off, on, off, on, off. Just tightening these screws down. I 
also don't I need to put 500 pounds of torque on these things. That's just about close here. It won't always close all the way. If it is, you may not be able to tighten it up that well. Get on here. I try to wiggle it with reasonable force and try to get it to fail. Put my hand on there, figure out where I want my brakes. That feels good for the moment. That's all you really need on them. All right, we'll test again. On off, it's away from this. <clears throat> I'm going to ride it for a bit, see how I like this, and I'll adjust it as needed. There's no really right or wrong place to put this, but obviously make sure it's comfortable for where your thumb is, and then make sure you can access your controls. On my Kawasaki, I run it down here, and I run the switch just at the bottom instead. I'm going to adjust this out as a last step. Right now you can tell when I pull the throttle, I let it go. It holds on. I let it go. It's just full release. And that's in the lock position. So I'm going to take this in just a bit. I've got it in the closed position where it's activated. See where it's starting to drag. <clears throat> it's got a lock nut so you don't have to worry. And this is holding so that's good. The other thing I want to point out with the throttle lock if you get in a panic situation and you forget it's happened to me and probably everybody else who has anything like this, make sure it's loose enough that you could roll that throttle back off. If not, it could put you into a hospital, better or worse. Unlock it. Should be able to release with no tension. No resistance at all. Put the lock on. And it should hold. And there you have it. That is how you install a throttle lock. My friends, be safe. Keep the rubber side down. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments or any ideas or bad jokes or whatever, go ahead and leave them below in the comments. Just kidding. I have to put this back on so you can watch this while I roll credits. And all the other videos right here, right here. The subscribe will be in here somewhere. Feel free to hit those buttons. Side note I should also say is if you like the channel, if you like the information, if you like what I'm giving you, go ahead and hit that button, hit those buttons, hit that like, hit that the subscribe, share it with your friends, share it with your enemies. Just share it. I hope you got something fun today. Stay tuned and subscribe for more videos. And bloopers. This is where we're going to take it off again. Because I forgot. Anyways, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you for watching.